So again, for me to get this going the right direction, I'm gonna turn my painting upside down. I'm gonna use a flat brush, and this is gonna be, while we're away, everything got very dry. So let me take my mister, which is just water in a bottle with a misting spray, <clears throat> and add more water. Good, we've got everything loosened up again. You can continue to add water to your paints for years. Uh, sometimes they'll use, lose some of their potency, but uh, if you've got dried up paints in a palette, why not try? Uh, paint's expensive, as you know, and uh, if you can keep using it, great, use it. A little bit too brown. Gonna add a little bit more blue, a little bit more green. I want a really, really dark shadow green. I'll take my palette off the box so you can see the color a little bit. Something in there is going to work. I'm going to try this. Too brown. I'm going to actually take a little of that up because I have too much of it. And as I mentioned, I got more clean water and the management of your water is a very personal thing. I have taken a lot of classes from a lot of watercolor instructors. Some of them, <laughs> I'm shocked. I had one instructor who used one pot of water the entire day. She would paint for maybe eight hours with one pot of water. I have no idea how she did it. It was kind of magic. Now I had another instructor and she used approximately eight or ten buckets of water all the time. Again, that seemed a little laborious to me. Um, too much water, but it worked for her. I tend to use one or two pots, and when it gets grubby, then I replace the water. That seems to work for me, but everybody has their own uh, protocol, so whatever works for you is what is the best plan for you. Remember I said it's important to see where your brush strokes coming from? Here I'm starting at the bottom because I want it to be the flatter part and I'm moving up into my, oh, my shadow crevices, I will call them. So it's the difference between the shadow and where the sun's hitting it. I might need to straighten them out a little bit. I might need to soften up the edges a little bit. So I'm gonna use some plain water to soften the edges just a little bit. This is basically dry on dry painting. Um, I didn't wet the water, I, mean, I didn't wet the paper before. There, we add more paint in here. Okay. So long shadow. So this is, you know, in the darker part of the day and uh, darker part of the afternoon. That sun's getting more towards the west. There we go. Now while I have this dark color going, I'm going to start doing some of my tree trunks. Tree trunks can be green or, of course, me. I always like purple, so I'm sure we'll have some purple tree trunks. But they can be brown, they can be blue. There's a lot of different options for tree trunks. So I'm going to start here and do some green ones. We don't have to see the whole thing. And I'll make some different, uh, make them some different widths too in a minute. But a nice flat brush is just a great thing for adding some tree trunks. That's a start. Now I'm going to make it a little bit more brown. You remember a couple minutes ago I got way too much brown, so I'm going to try to be a little bit more cautious here. Here's my house, and we'll start working on the house in just a minute, so I don't want to uh, overwhelm it. I'll come through some of my sky holes. And again, these jack pines, you mainly notice the dominant trunk. You really see very few of the branches coming off. We'll put some of the branches in, but not too many. 
so you can see it's beginning to look like trees along a bank. I think I'll take purple, <laughs> my favorite dark color, and mix it to some of this brown I have going on because some of those trunks are very dark. So it allows me to come in next to, yeah, see those are, with all this wind, it's pretty much dry. So I can come into some of these I just put down a second ago, well, a minute ago, and add to these. There are a lot of, as I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of trunks over there. Ooh, that's really purple, I like that. Some of these, the bottoms flare out a little bit more. So again, that's one of the great things about being here and sitting in real life, outside, on plein air, and being able to look at your subject. You don't have to guess, and you don't have to study a photograph you can't really see. And I paint from a lot of photographs, so there's nothing wrong with that. It's just when you have the chance and can get it together to paint outside. And you can see we put up with a lot of things. You can probably hear the mower across the lake. It's okay. We can all share the same space. Now some of these, it's gonna be really obvious that I'm gonna to need to make a shadow coming right off these trees. Some of them maybe not so much, but because we've got these long shadows, it's best if they are associated with something. Okay, I'm gonna work on the house a little bit before I completely cover it with trees. Everything is dry. If it weren't dry, I'd use a mall or I'd use something to hold my wrist again, uh, away from the paper. But right now everything's dry. That's a little too green, this color that I have. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of orange. Oops, too much. Oh, much better. Doesn't really matter what color the house or the barn actually is. I'm trying to make sure it stands out from the vegetation and the trees that I have in there. My crew and I were laughing a little bit earlier because it's funny, we're out here in the middle of nowhere. We're nearby a tiny town of a couple hundred people and it's been one of the noisiest <laughs> afternoons I remember. Sirens and mowing and wood chippers and it's kind of funny. And I actually like the way the paint is settling at the bottom of the building here. It'll add to mm, kind of a denser bottom. And as we recalled, because of where the light is coming, Frequently, it will be darker towards the bottom. So that works out perfectly for us. So I'm gonna keep my paper tilted a little bit. I don't want the paint to run off, but I think we're good. In a minute when I'm done with this and when it dries, then I will paint the um, roof on here too. But you can see, even though I had all that greenery in there, it's easy for me to pull out the building from the background. While I'm waiting for that, I'm gonna take a little bit of a blue-green and add a little bit more color to the water side of the edge. Not 
quite. It's a little cool. Sometimes when it feels dry, but it's still a little cool, um, there's still moisture in it. So we'll wait on that a little bit. We can go back to our rocks a bit too. Let's try to add a little bit more shape to our rocks. I'm going to put another glaze on top of this one. Uh, just whatever the muddy color is on my paper. I think that's going to work out fine for this rock. I'm adding a little bit of a darker side here because this certainly would be in the shadow. I'm also going to take just a little wadded up piece of paper towel, even though this is dirty, because I'm working on something that has a lot of color and I want it to be modeled. I'm going to just press it down and take out a little couple areas of color. That'll also add to the model texture of the rock. This rock needs a little bit more color, the, the one in the center. I'm going to put just some dotty stuff on here, just because I like dotty stuff. Again, I'm going to take a little bit of a paper towel and dab that so it's not quite so explicit. I like that rock. This one seems to have some lines on it. I'm going to take a flat brush and accentuate those lines a teeny bit. It's very blue. I'm okay with that. We'll dab it with a paper towel and it'll flatten it out. Flatten out the color, it won't flatten out. I hope it doesn't flatten out the rock. But do you see how adding that blue helps separate this rock from the other two rocks? I have done, <laughs> I one time did a painting that had a lot of rocks in it. I was really practicing rocks and at the exhibit where the, this rock painting was exhibited, a gentleman came up to it and shook his head and said, oh, those rocks with those colors would never be find, found in the same place. Those are not from the same piece of granite. And I just laughed because, as you know, I make up my rocks. So I thought, well, I'm glad they're so realistic that they suggest different geographical areas that he was really troubled. How did these rocks get in the same place? And I thought, you know what, I made it up. It's, don't, don't let it trouble you. There was another time, too, I had a large painting of corn. And uh, when I'm doing vegetation, I like to somehow have the leaves that are flawed. So maybe bugs have eaten at them. In my mind, I've created the bugs eating at them. Or I've created maybe where some, uh, some of the leaves have gotten overly dry or something. And another gentleman came up and said, um, no that type of corn would not have that type of bug eating it. This is not realistic. And I, I get such a kick out of that. <laughs> I'm going to put some more water here. You remember when we mentioned before that we're going to have kind of an upward flow to some of this greenery. Now I'm going to add some of that too. And surprisingly, once things are dry, you can add some water over the top. And although it'll smooth your lines out, it doesn't necessarily take everything off. So don't be afraid to sometimes even give just a light glaze on top of things. I want quite a blue color. So I'm going to, this might be way too much and I cannot see where my water is, so I must not have had enough water on there. 
There we go. Okay. I can see it a little bit better now. Let's try that. So this will give us that upward. I have some globs of paint. That's okay. I'm just not going to paint over them because it's going to make it way too blue. So I'll just... Oh, beautiful moths. Oh, how lovely. Again, I'm trying to make sure I'm not covering up all my sky holes. It got dry over here while I was painting on that other end. Now, so as you recall, if you're keeping up, this is probably the sixth or seventh layer that we've added to these trees. I'm gonna leave this in this direction so the paint stays with this upward movement for a while. And I'm going to, I'm gonna add a little bit of that blue I was gonna add right at the edge of the water. I see that dripping, I'm not gonna worry about it. It's fine, it's, since it's going with the same movement that I want things to go with, I'm fine with that. At the edge of the water, it still has that dark green, but it has more blue in it because it's water. In a second across this water too, I'm gonna add more of the, my favorite eyelash stroke in the water. So I'm going to switch from this flat brush to um, a round brush so I can get the more eyelash stroke effect. Round brush for my eyelash stroke. And I'm going to change the color so it's a little bit lighter too. That's probably enough. That might be too much. When I turn it right side up, we'll see. Um, I'm pretty okay with that. I think I'll leave it just like that in the water. This one bothers me because it's out of sync with the rest of the strokes. So I'm gonna use plain water and just, not too plain. There we go. 